Hey guys, good morning. Today I'm going to be pulling the motor out of the 66 Mustang project here. We've got to get the motor out, uh, pull the oil pan off of it, pull the valve covers off and take a look at what it looks like internally. Uh, the whole motor is going to get broken down. Uh, we're going to replace main bearings, rod bearings, Ch take a look at the camshaft, see how that looks, and the cylinder heads once the heads come off. Uh, we're going to hone the bores and re-ring it. That's the game plan. Um, once we get it opened up and take a look at the internals, I'll know better uh, where we're going to go from here and if we have to get any machine work done. Hopefully everything looks good and uh, we don't have to machine anything. I haven't turned the motor over yet because I didn't want to risk damaging the cylinder walls uh, with any rust uh, that might have been in there or uh, or possibly a bad timing set that might be preventing the motor from turning over. I didn't want to risk any of that so we're just going to tear it down and inspect it. My original plan was to pull everything out as one component, get the motor and transmission out all in one, but um, being that the Mustang has a fixed course port for the radiator, um, I'd have to lift the motor and transmission over the top of that and risk uh, dinging it up and damaging the core support uh, or possibly dinging a fender with the swing and the transmission out of the way. So rather than take a chance with any of that, I'm just going to pull it out as two components. So I'll pull the motor out first, get that up on the engine stand and torn down, and then later on we'll drop the transmission out of it and uh, take a look at the tranny. So I've got all the accessories removed from the motor. I pulled the carburetor off, took the distributor cap and rotor off. I wasn't able to get the distributor body out of the uh, top of the intake manifold. I'm not sure exactly why it's frozen place. Um, that's the other reason for getting the motor out and torn down uh, without removing the distributor. I'm going to get the oil pump out of the way and tap the, tap the distributor out from the bottom and hopefully I can get it out without scoring anything up. Uh, so to get the motor separated from the transmission, I've got to climb under here, pull the starter out, um, also take the inspection cover off uh, from the back side of the engine block. Get all of that uh, out of the way, take any bell housing bolts that are on the bottom side that I can get to removed, um, disconnect the torque converter from the flex plate, get the car back down on the ground, take the top bell housing bolts out with the, with, once the engine hoist is connected to the, to the motor to support it, and uh, pull a little tension on it and uh, take, the, take the motor mount bolts out. and carefully separate it from the transmission without banging up the flex plate and chipping teeth off of it. And then once it's out and hanging from the engine hoist, I'll mount it up to the uh, engine stand and we'll start tearing it apart. So that's the game plan. I'm going to get my gloves on here, get dirty, and get to work. Okay guys, so while the oil's draining out of the uh, oil pan, I wanted to show you guys the damage here on the end of the oil plug. So, uh, pretty bad. I'm going to have to replace the oil plug. While it looked good on the outside, the exterior of the oil plug looks fine and, you know, on first inspection under there, didn't raise any concerns. But if you look at the inside of the oil plug, You can see the whole end of the oil plug is rusted off. And this appears to maybe be a self-tapping style plug. It's got a slit down the middle of it, which could have been used to repair the threads in the oil pan. So if that's the case, then we're going to have to replace the pan and put a put a new drain plug in it. But And that's no big deal. But uh, the rust on the end of that plug is pretty bad. If you watch the video of the oil coming out of the pan you'll see that what comes out first is a couple quarts of water and then the rest is like this milk shaky uh, emulsified water and oil mixture that comes out of the into the pan. So um, not good, not good. I'm hoping that the crankshaft uh, doesn't have rust on it like this. I'm hoping that 
you know oil floats on top of water so I'm hoping that the the oil stayed on top of the the condensation and the water that collected in the bottom of the pan and uh, doesn't have any any rust as bad as what we see here on the end of this plug Hey guys, I wanted to take a second here and show you uh, what I found uh, in the lower radiator hose on the uh, 66 Mustang project here. Uh, disassembly continues on the car and uh, while taking things apart I've been inspecting inspecting everything that comes off looking for signs of damage and maybe give, giving me some clues as to how deep I'm going to have to go into the motor once the motor's out here on the engine stand. Um, and this was very concerning when I found it. Uh, it's a it's a common problem with cars that have sat for a long period of time. It's something that you need to be aware of in case you're buying a project car and you uh, may not consider the cooling system as something that you need to uh, completely disassemble and inspect uh, when you're trying to get the car back out, out on the road. It's, it's tempting to just throw some fresh coolant in there, some fresh water, start it up and run it. And I wanted to show you what I found here on the 66 um, so that you guys could see how bad it could really be inside there and this is one of the reasons why I've decided uh, to pull the motor out and just go through it top to bottom clean it out really well um, and then put it back together and we'll probably have to do a quick hone on the cylinders and replace the rings and bearings and etc but um, but this is what I found I don't think the camera is going to be able to see what what it looks like inside so I'm just gonna dump this out and this is you know completely as found um, I'm just gonna kinda loosen up what's in here this is unaltered this is exactly uh, exactly how I found it I am trying to knock loose some of the some of the clingy bits that are hanging on the inside of this hose. But when I removed the hose, it was completely blocked with this rust and scale. And these are big chunks and flakes of rust. That's something to bear in mind when you're putting a car back on the road that's been sitting for a long time. Obviously, if I had any doubts about how long this car has been sat unrunning or not running um, you know I don't have any doubts now this uh, this is quite telling okay guys well my cameras all went dead while I was hoisting the motor out so I missed the money shot but got the motor out got the engine stand over here I'm gonna mount it up on the engine stand I had to go run and get some new hardware because the the old hardware I had for the engine stand uh, didn't fit the uh, Ford block here, and now it's time to uh, get this motor on the engine stand so we can pull it, start pulling it apart tomorrow. So yeah guys I was pleasantly surprised with the condition of the motor uh, I think when I crack it open it's gonna be as expected I I don't think there's gonna be too many big surprises going on in there and that's all good things I forgot to remove the flex plate there when I mounted it to the engine stand. If you've got a flywheel on it or a flex plate on it, you're not going to be able to get that off once you once you mount it to your engine stand. So be sure you remove that uh, motor plate, flex plate, flywheel, whatever the case may be uh, for your engine before you bolt that engine stand on. Every now and then, you know, a 
I get caught out and uh, I know some of you guys were watching thinking when is he going to take that flex plate off and you were right. But in the end today we got uh, good progress done on the Mustang. Um, you're going to see some video here uh, in this video about the condition of the cooling system. I know the, the water pump is probably completely disintegrated. I doubt there's an impeller in there anymore. I think it was all laying in that bottom radiator hose. And I know I've got to replace all the spigots and water inlet fittings on not only the engine block but as well as the new water pump itself so I'm gonna have to buy some replacements for that I'm gonna pop all the freeze plugs out of it here when we disassemble it so I can clean out those water jackets make sure I get all of the sand and grit and cornflakes out of there and uh, have a good clean engine when we start putting things back together so for today's video guys that's about gonna do it um, I hope some of you enjoyed that drone fit footage that I put up here this week I wanted to get a video out, but the progress on the Mustang has been slow. Um, it's my own fault. I've had a lot of busy work going on uh, with my primary job, and I just haven't had the time to dedicate to climb underneath there and make some progress on the Mustang until today. So, uh, so thanks for your patience. Uh, sorry for the lack of content, and thank you to all you new subscribers. We've had a lot of new subscribers here the last month, and that's awesome. Uh, it's really keeping me mo motivated to keep working and keep turning out these videos for you guys. I hope you're getting something out of the content and even something out of the drone footage. I'm going to get better at that, I promise. But I thought it was cool and I thought I would share it with you guys. So for today's video, guys, thanks for watching. Please click like and subscribe if you're new, and I'll keep delivering as much content as I can for you guys. Thanks for watching.